I think mine, 19F, boyfriend, 21M, is gay and is cheating on me with my brother, 21M. The names of my partner Illy and my brother John will be used throughout this tale. For the last three years, I've been with Illy, and I've found him to be a fascinating, gorgeous, and clever man, all of which are characteristics that I find appealing. Meanwhile, John is your typical high school crush, and I have to admit that he's so gorgeous that I heard a few girls in high school, including my female cousin, had a thing for him at one point. When we are out on dates, Illy continues to ask me a lot of questions about my brother, which is okay with me, but it can get tiresome at times, which has lead me to taunt and make fun of him, since he has a thing for him, which I feel like he does. Three days previously, my parents had not arrived at the house, so he came to see me since we were going to the mall, and he was waiting for me to get dressed, and as we were conversing, I saw him blushing in the direction of John. The thought didn't bother me, so I walked into the bathroom to take a shower. Then I heard him and John go into his room and close the door behind them. After that I continued bathing, and the whole ten-minute shower was almost completely deafeningly quiet. It seemed like they were having when I got out of the bathroom, so I went into John's room to investigate. Having spent a few minutes putting on my clothes, I approached John's bedroom door when I overheard him say, I'm going to and moan. When I pounded on the door and questioned if everything was in order, I could hear them putting on their pants and opening the door to let them in. We went to the mall together after John said they were just playing video games and doing other things, I know he's lying, and it was nice to see him again. He was holding hands with Ely when I saw him when we were at the mall, and when I informed them, they claimed it was an accident. When we returned home, I inquired as to John's orientation, and if he had a preference for Ellie. The stress on his body has made him stiff and his hands are shaking as a consequence of his anxieties. I could see tears in his eyes, so I said no before heading into his room and closing the door. I'm aware that he's lying, but he refuses to acknowledge it. The fact that Ely had cheated on me with my brother left me perplexed and upset, so I messaged him and told him I wanted to end my relationship with him since he had cheated on me with my brother. He proceeded to lie and claim that they were just friends, despite the fact that I had previously seen everything and could see all of the obvious clues. The moment I tried to go into John's room to speak to him, he started sobbing uncontrollably and talking on the phone to Ely about his connection with me and how he's a closeted gay guy who hasn't come out to me or either of our parents yet. When I confronted him, he ultimately admitted that he had a crush on Ely and came out to me as a gay male. Upon leaving his room, I was inconsolable and enraged, but John sought to take my hand in his and instructed me not to inform my parents about what had happened until he could do it. The situation has left me feeling sad and perplexed, and unclear of what to do next. What do you recommend I do next? While I realize it's a terrible idea to expose John, the knowledge that he's attracted to Ely is too much for me to bear. Story 2 Advice for when you catch someone cheating I 37M caught my ex, 30F, cheating six months ago. This is my advice with the benefit of hindsight. Before I begin, I should probably state that I have no background in psychology. My opinions on this issue are no more valid than anybody else's. This is only my own opinion based on my own experience. When you first learn about it, do not respond. Allow yourself some time to think about it. Your first response will most likely be negative. You must give yourself time to digest your feelings before deciding on the best course of action. The more time you allow yourself, the better off you will be. This is not an easy task. This is like to attempting to have a pleasant conversation with someone while someone else is twisting a knife in your back. I was not married at the time. There are no shared accounts. There are no children present. So I didn't have to be concerned with attorneys or anything else of the kind. If that's the case, gather evidence before confronting. Save your phone data, emails, and everything else you have. If possible and required, hire a private investigator. You should not expose your dirty linen in public. You will want to seek advice, assistance, and direction from friends. You may want to inform everyone so that the other person is embarrassed. This should not be done. If you need to speak to someone about it, a therapist is definitely the best person to talk to. If you are unable to visit a therapist, consider speaking with a trusted confidant whom you know would respect your privacy. You will not want your family, friends, and community to know all the sordid aspects of your life as time passes. When people ask you why you split up, remain vague. Assume you were just incompatible. Make positive comments about them. This may be relayed to them. They will have to bear the weight of their falsehoods. 
they will have to keep telling falsehoods and will never be able to say anything negative about you with authority. You will have done honorably and with honesty all the way to the finish. People will admire you for it. Recognize that the person you are with is not who you believe they are. It took me a long time to complete this one. You'll want to keep seeing your so as the lovely, caring person you fell for. Unfortunately, it is not their personality. They do not value you in the same manner that you value them. They are self-centered and lack empathy. They will deceive you and influence you into thinking of them in the same manner you used to. They will act in this manner for selfish motives, because they appreciate the affirmation you offer them. It's not because they adore you. They don't, since they adore themselves, don't be duped. You are more precious than they are. You'll become better with time. Whatever attributes you notice in your now ex-partner, they are true. They are not able to compensate for their shortcomings. There are other people in the world that have similar characteristics and are capable of maintaining a positive and respectful relationship. You may, and most likely will, come across one of these individuals. In order for this to happen, you must move on and get over your ex as quickly as possible. That is exactly what they are going to do. These are the things that people resort to when things aren't going their way. Each of them will have their own set of arguments, excuses, and explanations. This is complete and utter. The only thing that is true in this situation is that you have just learned how individuals react to adversity. No matter whether they were unloved, not getting enough affection, needing affirmation, confused, having mental problems, drunk, or any other such description. Whatever you do, they will ultimately return to their previous state of mind. The same is true for how they will react. This is a tough fact to come to terms with, sorry. Don't get caught up in revenge. It's not going to be of any assistance to you. Keep your attention on yourself. It's not going to happen, believe me. They are not deserving of your attention. You most definitely are. You owe them a debt of gratitude for the care, consideration, and significance you accord them. The world is a mirror of one's own self. Were you of the opinion that they were a good person? This is due to the fact that you are outstanding. Did you feel that they didn't appreciate you? They are most likely not concerned with anything of significance. Were your weaknesses the main focus of their attention? This is due to their desire to feel better about themselves and to feel more confident in their abilities. Working on yourself and taking care of yourself is, in my view, the most important thing you can do right now. I know I said not to worry about revenge, but I am certain that the most effective way to retaliate against this person is to be nice with him or her. I realize it seems silly, but please bear with me. Maintain your composure while being polite and empathic. Make them feel good by saying nice things to them. Inform them that you have faith in them, that you would be on the lookout for them at all times. They are beautiful people who deserve to be cherished and cherished by others. Express your disappointment that it will not be able to join you. Then continue on with your life and heed the advice of everyone around you. Concentrate on living life to the maximum extent possible. When people look back on their lives in years to come, it is likely that they will remember you as the kind and loving person that you are. The fact that you were an extraordinarily furious person will be completely forgotten by them. They will take note of your accomplishments, whether they find you in person or via social media platforms. They will be unable to think of anything else other than the fact that they have made the biggest mistake of their lives. That is exactly what they did. You are welcome to take it from me. You are worthy of a higher level of treatment. You've made strides forward.